but the, the topic of today's video is how to charge uh, more than everybody else and how to get away with it and how to thrive in a market when you're doing that. And so we see this, this a lot in uh, guys that are running a truck and they're out there saying, you know, I, I can't charge anymore because the market won't sustain it. Like nobody here will pay that. So that's a common thread and it's in every business. It's all over the place. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. Yes, you have competition. And yes, if your pricing is is hitting the demographic that can only afford that much, then yeah, you kind of have found the ceiling. But what we're going to challenge you to do, because I know it to be the truth, is there's more money there and there's more customers. You're, you're just lacking imagination and how you present it. So I've got an example. If you think that you can't charge more than uh, $150, you know, for a house wash or some, whatever the number is, some measly number. Here's a good example for you. All right. We like these cookies. These come from Walmart. They're, uh, they're cheap. I don't care about them being necessarily cheap, but they're like the soft, the soft batch, uh, cookies. And there's 52 of them in here. You can see the boys have already ate a good many, uh, but they cut their $5 for 52 cookies. So that comes out to 0.96 of a cent. So it's less than a penny per cookie. And here's what we could do. We could take one of these cookies and we could take maybe three of these, right? And we could put them in a little Ziploc bag and we could go and maybe go to an event somewhere and we could sell that Ziploc bag. I want to get you guys to tell me, do you think we could get three bucks for three of those in a Ziploc bag? What do you think? I think so. I think so. I, I think at least get a dollar. <clears throat> We're in it for a penny, right? We're in it for a penny. And we could sell this cookie, no doubt, easy for a dollar. You could probably get more than that, but we'll we'll just stop at a dollar because we I think we would all agree that that's a, that's worth a dollar to somebody if it's packaged. And you put three of them together, three's about right. Like that's a, that's about as many as a dad needs to eat. So you put three of them in a Ziploc bag, and what did you do? You just one hundred x, right? Or you if you got a penny, you got three cents in it, and you get you're getting a dollar a piece for them. That's a pretty good return on investment. But somebody could say, well, it's, it's only worth, why would anybody buy that? Because they can just go to Walmart and get the big pack for $5, right? Well, we'll, we'll gnaw it up. That's the same reason that you go in a gas station and you get a 20-ounce drink. And it, how much is a 20-ounce drink? It's a lot. It's a dollar and a half now, I guess, a dollar fifty. But a two-liter in the same store is cheaper. Is the customer actually paying for it? They're paying not for the house wash, okay? That's only one piece of the thing that they're paying for. They're not paying for the driveway to be clean. They're paying for it. I'm going to throw out some, some things that I think that they're paying for. And if you're not able to close at that higher ticket value, there's, there's an AP term. But if you're not able to get that, it is a lack of you and your imagination of packaging your services, of confidence in the pitch, and the, the ability to understand what you're offering is worth that much money, right? So my house is not nothing crazy. It's, it's a nice house, but it's, it's not like a mansion or anything. I would pay, because I'm thinking about just getting one of my local guys that has a rig to come do it. And I hope they don't watch this video. But they could charge me, if they, got, if they had a, a seven in it, if it went past $700, I'd probably be like, nah, I'd just do it myself. But anything below that, which is to wash this house, probably an hour job. It's pretty easy. I've done it a bunch of times. So, but here's what I also know. There's a ton of little dudes around here that would come over here and price this thing at like $199. And they would think that they were doing something. And $199 for two hours of work is, you know, if you think about it in that mentality, it sounds good. But look at what they left on the table. They left $500 on the table. I would rather pay one of my two or three local dudes that I trust that bought rigs from me $700 because I know they're not going to roast my TV on the back porch back here. They're not going to mess up my patio furniture. They're not going to spray bleach in an outlet. They're not going to drop a ladder on, on one of my vehicles, right? They're Alyssa's stupid German shepherds back there. And they're not going to like mess with the dog. You know, I can trust them on the property. So here's what the customer's paying for. They're paying for the results. Okay. That should go without saying Aaron has preached this high ticket stuff and he gets guys that will challenge him like, that you're not going to do a good job. The reason he never mentions that is because we just figured y'all knew that. Like, <laughs> that's just, you have to do a good job. So the customer should get the result, duh. That's just, that's baked into the process. But they're paying for the convenience and they're paying for the experience, all right? The convenience of that they didn't have to fool with it and the experience 
Now, there's not much experience we can offer them, but what Mike teaches, Mike's systems, and Justin, you can kind of elaborate on this, but the way that Mike inbounds a customer all the way to them paying is an easy, seamless Amazon type experience on purpose. It's calculated on purpose because today's buyer, the kind of people he's targeting, they're busy, they're professionals, they, they're both working, right? And they ain't got a lot of time. And so we had a guy in uh, on Facebook the other day was turning down a job or something because he, the homeowner couldn't be there to pay him when he got done. It was something to that effect. It was like, dude, what are you doing? Just send them a QuickBooks invoice. That's part of the experience that the customer is willing to pay for because it's seamless and it gets the job done and it's smooth and nobody really cares as long as you're targeting the right people. So that one penny cookie, okay, whatever amount of bleach, soap, and gasoline in the, the pressure washer, we're going to take that little investment and we're going to 100x that into a house wash, a roof cleaning, a driveway cleaning, whatever it is. Could be a specialty chem job, right? If it's degreaser and you get some dynamite degreaser and you clean it, okay? That that needs to be pretty expensive. But if you're just charging them the value of the cookie, how much is a dozen eggs worth right now? A lot. It's not if you got a chicken. It's the same price as it always was, right? But nobody's going to go buy chickens and put them out back. They're just going to keep paying for the eggs and complaining on Facebook. So what we're going to do is challenge you guys to find your cookies and mark them up. Use your imagination of how that you can package that cookie. How can you package that thing and present it to the client in a way that they see the value, they see the convenience, they get the experience, and they walk away feeling happy and they call you again next year. Right. Because if Cody was selling the cookies, right, he could sell them for three dollars for a, for a pack of three, and he's not the only one selling cookies. There's other people selling cookies too. So same lines, pressure washing. You guys offer offer a service. Um, you're not the only one offering the service, but you can um, price it higher. I do want to speak a little bit to Mike's process with the Amazon process. One thing that I've noticed with with clients off of Google is it's all about speed. If I call somebody that calls in off of Google like a few hours later. I've had this happen already four or five times. They go, oh, no, thanks. We already found somebody. They don't even want to hear my price anymore. They're just like, oh, no, thanks. We already found somebody. So it just kind of speaks to the fact that if you're fast, typically people will go with the first with the first quote that they get. They don't even want to hear my quote. My quote might have been $200 less. doesn't matter because it's all about speed. They got somebody that looked up, ready to roll. Uh, 